Hi, this is John LeBlanc from PD. I'm here today to talk about line types and uh, what's available, what the characteristics of each line are, and why you might want to choose one line over another. So Dacron is a brand name from DuPont for polyester. We call it Dacron in the sport. It's really polyester. Um, it's good stuff. Uh, it has, uh, it's a bit bulky by today's standards, but it has just enough elasticity to, to make things more forgiving. If uh, for student parachutes, you get a student that's kind of rolling down on his shoulder after a, uh, one of those little tracks where they kind of get a little steep and having that Dacron line uh, just kind of makes things a little less critical on opening. Uh, the, the, for two reasons. One is the elasticity is there's enough there to kind of take the edge off of that short spike in the opening shock. And, uh, also the, the thicker line just is a little easier to stow for the, for the novice. Um, it, uh, it abrades, you know, it's, it's not the, the best line in terms of, uh, wear, but, um, but it's real forgiving line and it's used, uh, on uh, in conservative applications. It's also uh, a worthwhile consideration for somebody who has a really delicate body who uh, just can't afford an occasional art opening. It really uh, helps reduce that. So Dacron is a good all-around line that is still in use, uh, but as parachutes started getting smaller in the late 70s, early 80s and going faster, um, the drag of the Dacron line because of its extra bulk started to become something that uh, people wanted to get around. Initially, it was a pack volume thing. People were crazy about small pack volume, so they were looking for a low bulk line. And the line that that uh, the sport came up with was, was uh, made of Kevlar. Kevlar is used in bulletproof vests. It's known as an aramid fiber. Uh, it, its obvious advantage was this, the lower... Uh, the lower volume, but uh, the fact that it had lower drags was starting to make a difference. Um, it, uh, it was kind of uh, a short-lived thing because as uh, at the same time Kevlar was coming out, the freefall speeds were going up. And uh, it was just behaving funny. Uh, and uh, there were a lot of failures of Kevlar line quite, quite early in the life of a parachute, you know, 20, 40, 50 jumps, you just start having lines breaking. And it just wasn't worth it. <laughs> it just wasn't worth it. So Kevlar was the first low bulk line. It's pretty much not in use at all in the sport right now. So as uh, Kevlar went out of vogue, uh, everybody went back to Dacron. It was just the sensible choice at the time. And it was that way uh, when we got into manufacturing and designing and uh, our founder, Bill Coe, was really looking at ways to improve performance of the parachutes we had at that time and uh, came up with the Spectra line. Uh, we, we called it Microline when we first put it out. Um, nobody knew what it was, but it is a UHMW, which stands for Ultra High Molecular Weight Fiber. It's actually a polyethylene that's been, uh, you know, somebody's done some magic with it. I don't, it's certainly not the polyethylene like on a, that you normally see. Uh, Spectra was not only low bulk, but it was far lower bulk than Kevlar. And we found that it had excellent wear properties. It lasts longer in terms of abrasion resistance uh, than even Dacron by a long shot. So it was great stuff. Um, it's quite inelastic, even less elastic than Kevlar. So you did notice the difference on the openings in terms of the, there was just a short little peak on the on the shock and as long as the openings were generally good you were fine <clears throat> the the spectra line was was the choice for many many years but uh, it has some kind of funny properties and uh, they're not really much of a problem for a lot of parachutes but uh, as you start getting into the higher performance parachutes they start to become troublesome the main problem with the spectra is that um, even though it's very inelastic, it doesn't change its length with a shock, over time it'll actually stretch a little bit. It creeps if it's under load for a while. But at the same time, it's sensitive to heat and the heat causes some lines to shrink. So as your slider grommets generate heat in the, in the snivel of your parachute and it comes down the lines, 
those lines that it hits against fairly uh, heavily get shrunk, while other lines that take a high load uh, stretch. So the thing, the trims go all over the place. Now, it's not a big deal for a lot of parachutes. Uh, you know, the older, larger, high performance parachutes were, were fine with it. You know, that eventually maybe the openings would get a little weird and that was your signal to reline. But the thing is, is you could go a thousand jumps and still have a line set that looked nice. So it was just out of trim. So as time went on, the, uh, this, this trim problem became quite a limitation on Spectra. So we started looking for something else. So uh, Spectra has been a great line for a long time. Uh, the micro line is, is a very good low bulk all purpose line with the limitation being that the trims going will go out and on some canopies that can really cause some problems. Uh, Vectran is the next line that came out and uh, it was really designed to eliminate the trim problem. Uh, when I first saw it on the market uh, on some other canopies, I thought, what's the point? You know, why, why put up with uh, greater line wear um, when the micro line does well? Uh, my opinion of it changed when we started developing the velocity. Uh, we were making as little as a quarter inch change in a specific line uh, let's say three or four lines and the change in performance was really noticeable and we really wanted that change with a quarter inch difference in a line making that much difference we knew that there was just no way spectra was going to serve us on the velocity so we went to vectran vectran is a liquid crystal polymer and uh, it's really neat stuff uh, it does not have the abrasion resistance of the spectra so it's not the line for everybody for all reasons. You do have more frequent relines. The nice thing about Vectran is that it really holds its trims very well. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's so close to perfect that it's really the line to use for, uh, for the bulk of the high performance parachutes. The Vectran has higher abrasion uh, issues, or I should say uh, it has higher, uh, lower abrasion resistance is the way to put it. And uh, it has a little more friction with the grommets, so it's a little, uh, it opens a little bit different for, for most canopies. Uh, it's a subtle difference. Um, you'll be re relining your canopy a lot more with Vectran, um, but uh, it's got the nice low drag and uh, the, uh, the canopy will stay in trim all the way until the lines just look too scary to use. And uh, whereas with the Spectra, you may go a thousand, fifteen hundred jumps, and the lines still look okay in terms of the wear, but it's so far out of trim that uh, most skydivers now will notice such a difference in the trims that they're now relining their microline canopies more frequently as well. So you you'll reline, you know, some canopies just as quickly with Vectran or microline, but you'll do it for different reasons: the Vectran for the wear, and the microline because of the trim. So Vectran does a really good job of keeping uh, uh, the, the lines in trim. Uh, not perfect, but really good. Um, but in the quest for greater performance, uh, we eventually started looking into HMA, which is uh, a high modulus aramid. As an aramid, it's somewhat similar to Kevlar chemically, but its properties are quite different. It's uh, for, its, for a certain strength line, it's even lower drag and lower lower bulk than even Vectran. And it actually holds its trims better than Vectran, at least in the current versions of Vectran and HMA that we're using now. So it's great stuff. Um, it's a bit finicky though. It, as it gets close to its breaking strength, in other words, if you have an opening that's just a little hard and you get a couple of lines really close to its breaking strength, it won't break, but it'll reduce the strength of that line permanently. So over a period of time, you just have lines doing weird things. It's not much of a problem if you have a fairly strong line on your canopy, but with the com competition people using lighter and lighter lines in the quest for lower drag and more performance, it can get pretty finicky, especially in the 300 pound world. So with the 300 pound HMA, which is what the swoopers are using with the comp velocity, 
you really need to be careful about uh, you know using the line for uh, subterminal openings and replacing them very frequently in, in the order of about a hundred jumps. In the in the uh, heavier lines, uh, so-called heavier five seven hundred pound HMA, it's a lot more useful. Uh, it's uh, it's it's more well mannered. It's not quite as well mannered as Vectran, but it does hold its trims better and it does have lower drag. So for the ultimate in performance, HMA at this point is the way to go. But again, it depends on the parachute and the pilot. There's no sense in hanging HMA on a great big you know intermediate you know a saber two or or uh, you know some larger canopy. Uh, it's really meant for high speed swooping. Uh, we have Dacron, which is super forgiving, easy to use, uh, reasonable wear characteristics, lots of elasticity, which takes the edge off of uh, the occasional strange opening. We have Spectra, which is ultra long lasting, doesn't hold the trims very well, shouldn't be a problem for some of the more conservative parachutes. Uh, as you get into smaller, faster canopies that are more critical on trim, you need to go to Vectran. Vectran has the low drag that you want, but also holds trims well. And then for people who are into real high performance canopy flight with uh, the, the best, fastest wings around, HMA is a, is a reasonable uh, alternative. Uh, a little picky uh, when it gets loaded near its, uh, near its ultimate strength, but it's, it's good stuff if you respect it for what it is and what it isn't. Now, I've been talking in general terms about these different lines, HMA, Vectran, but I want you to realize that just because a line is Vectran or just because a line is HMA, it doesn't mean that it's all the same. There are a lot of different properties in the line that have to do with very subtle uh, things that happen in, in the construction of the line, how it's braided, the combination of, of fibers and carriers, how it's finished, Lots of little subtle stuff, and we know a lot about that because we've been working with our manufacturers for a long time to improve the characteristics of the line. But I want to say that it's not pure science. There's a lot of science in there, but there's an art to this stuff. So we're always working with our manufacturers to improve all of the lines that we're using. So when you think about what's coming next, you might find uh, some surprises. Maybe there'll be some new space age material that'll make all these lines obsolete. I doubt it, but it's possible. But I think you might find that with continued subtle improvements in the weaving, the finishing, uh, that you might find uh, some improvements in some of these characteristics that I've been calling limitations on these lines. So it's going to be an exciting next couple of years in that regard.